Hey, No Code Ops, Phil here. And today I'm joined by Dimitri from Grist. Dimitri, how's it going? It's great. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So, um, so Dimitri's uh, the founder of Grist and, you know, I've been talking to him for, man, I felt like the last time I talked was years ago. So I'm so excited to see how the platform's evolved since then. Um, so do you want to give us a bit of a backstory on the origin story behind Grist, how it came to be and what's, you know, what's the main kind of goal of the platform? Yeah, um, we actually started Grist uh, quite a few years ago, even before we first talked, uh, yeah. with a vision to improve spreadsheets. And spreadsheets are really um, a key data and productivity tool. And I remember actually asking myself uh, when we were starting, what would I expect from such a tool 20 years into the future? And is it still going to be the same kind of two-dimensional grid? That would be disappointing because it's really not a great model. Uh, for a lot of data and it creates a lot of problems uh, but it's also really useful so the question we asked ourselves how can you keep the best parts of spreadsheets but actually make them better and so that's what we set out to build with grist and there are two big sides to this uh, idea of evolving spreadsheets um, the product feature side uh, which i will show now and the philosophical side which i will mention as well um, so i'm happy to show you Let's do it. Let's dive right into like what an aha moment would look like in the in the platform. Please, uh, yeah, feel free to share your screen. I'm excited to dive in. Okay, so let me share my screen. So this is a blank page for a uh, brand new user visiting Grist. I'm not even signed in here, so you can test it out without signing in. And to begin with, I'm just going to import a spreadsheet of data. I have a spreadsheet with some contacts. And so here's what you see as a spreadsheet, uh, what I imported. Um, there are only a little bit of differences here with Excel, the columns have names. Yep. Uh, so every row is actually a record of data. There's also uh, columns have types. So if you, for example, see here some URLs, if you change to the type to be a hyperlink, they all become oh, cool. hyperlinks. You don't have to do it uh, applied to each row manually. Um, and a very important feature of spreadsheets, which right off the bat, I will say that this was central to Grist as well, is formulas. So you need to formulas to be kind of a first uh, class citizen in this type of product, and they need to be powerful. And in Grist, it's very um, uh, easy, and it is a powerful thing to create formula. So let's create a formula, let's say for full name. And you can say, I'm gonna say last name, maybe let's make it an uppercase put a comma and first name. And here I have a very simple way to combine Amazing. data with formulas. Um, this formula actually uses Python. And I'll say another thing about Python later on, uh, why we chose Python, but actually all Excel, um, most Excel functions are available. So if you're coming from Excel world and you wanna use, you know, functions like concatenate instead, cause that's what you know and love, you can and it'll work. Oh, great. Uh, and do you have like any drag and drop builder for that type of stuff yet? Or is it mainly you have to understand the formulas uh, to be able to do it? There's no drag and drop builder, but there is autocomplete. So for, firstly, oh, you, can, you, can, you can like click around if you want to insert a column uh, okay. or you can, if you start typing, you know, it shows you kind of all the columns you can. That's so. great. So it's actually pretty convenient to enter formulas and where Grist really shines is for more complex data. And that's when more interesting formulas come in. You can really uh, do a lot with them. Right. And then, now another, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, so the other big aspect of Gris is that you can have different views of the same data. So here we are looking at these records of data as a spreadsheet and you know, have to scroll horizontally to see the full record. That's really kind of one of the inconvenient things of a spreadsheet, but you can create uh, another view of it, of it and you can, have multiple views, which we call page widgets on the same page. So here I can uh, show the same data from the context table, but as a card, I can link it to this table. And here, as I navigate around here, the context update, which is the same exact data, same field from this row, uh, but laid out as a card. You can customize this card in any way you want. And uh, this uh, table, no, is no longer needed kind of with all the fields. So I can actually go ahead and hide all except for company. 
So I can turn this to be oh wow yes yeah, vector. So you just switch through. Let me ask you this on this front, right? Like one thing I see in these applications that is similar to this um, that is becoming more and more important um, is that. Uh, there's a view with certain permissions that can or can't edit certain things, um, right? Do you guys have that permissioning layer here or is it everybody has like a single pane of permission still? That's a great question. We actually have permissions, um, which we call access rules at a very deeper, at a deeper level. It's not at a view level, it's on the data level. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have a tab open here to show it. Um, Amazing. So here, here are some access rules. So this is an example of like a sales team where you might have uh, a bunch of people, uh, contacts that are, have owners assigned to them. So I have like Chris, Lucy, and Marianne. And then um, there's a way to preview, like let's say if I'm viewing this document as Marianne, because of uh, so how- So it's like the, view as running user essentially. Yeah. Um, so if Marianne was to open this document, she would just see her contact. And right. this is not just a view property, um, and it's, it's not only about editing, you can control editing or you can control view. And if she would try to use API using her API key, she would only see her context that way as well. So it goes all wow. the way. Wow, that is incredible. That is really, really cool. So um, I'm gonna ask you the one question that I'm sure you're anticipating, <laughs> which is, so I remember years ago, right? The war, there was like a war going on in like the database meets spreadsheet world between Fieldbook and Airtable. And Airtable, you know, of course, won that war, right? Uh, this reminds me a lot of Fieldbook in its like kind of beauty through simplicity, which I actually love. Um, but talk to me about this. Um, what is the biggest difference that folks should know between looking at this and Airtable? Well, I was hoping to show a few more things. Um, and feel free to show those things in highlighting that, but you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just like trying to think would, through folks so, who are so watching in, this. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, the biggest difference is if your if your data is a simple list of records, Airtable makes it look beautiful. It's it's good. It's fine. If your data becomes complicated and you want to see many different related data on the same screen, or you want to calculate things um, and have charts that reflect kind of which uh, subset of data you're looking at right now. Um, for complex things, Grist offers a lot more. Cool. So Do you want to dive into showing us one or two of those? Yeah. Well, one thing I want to show you here, I'm still yeah. on this very simple example. I had one single table. Yeah. Um, and uh, the example that where a spreadsheet really doesn't work well is if I now want to start keeping track with some data associated with each contact, like every call I have with that contact during my email interaction or meeting, right? Mm -hmm. I want to take, uh, re record the notes from that um, and the dates when I met someone. And it, in a spreadsheet, if you remember that uh, wide grid, you can imagine maybe adding some columns, one for each interaction, that's really not convenient. Um, with Grist, I could add a table of interactions and link it, and it would only take a minute, but since we have very few minutes available, I'm just gonna jump here to this example where it's already done. Same kind of thing here, I have context, context card, but here I also added an interactions table. And, and that is now related is to that contact. To the context. So I click a different contact, I see a different list of interactions. And if I, you know, I added a date here and uh, some notes, and that's for this context. I click a different contact, I have different um, a set of related data. So the ability to create that easily and the ability to lay it out on the screen uh, that's, um, I think, the key, uh, the, the key feature of Grist. This is really what it is, is relational database. And if you're a developer, you probably know relational databases. That's kind of underlying every application out there. Sure. But if you are a spreadsheet creator, so that's, that's what our goal is, to make it really easy for a spreadsheet creator to benefit from, from these concepts. Um, here you can see there's a lot more examples of what you can do, how you can lay out data. Um, uh, it's like a visualization layer here. Yeah. This kind of linking that I showed where you can select the context in you know, a, a card or the interactions uh, can update. Uh, the same thing can apply to other widgets like charts. So here I can select the year and see a chart update that shows like a breakdown of some investment data for that year. 
or select the category and see how uh, that category works out over the years. So the dynamic linking aspect um, is also a very uh, kind of unique thing about Grist. So one thing I noticed here on the left is you have something called code view. Uh, am, am I correct to assume that uh, this makes it kind of like a low code platform and that like you could actually have developer go in and, you know, add or tweak things here? Um, you can't change things in the code view, at least not yet, but it does provide you a very good overview of all the logic of the spreadsheet. Ah, that's um, good to know. Okay. So this, this is all the columns. And then for every formula you have, this formula is actually present right here. So if you, you know, if you ever imagine like a big Excel spreadsheet, lots of formulas, then you know which ones are formulas. Well, here, every formula that you have in the spreadsheet is all right here. So you can go through, you can find what you're looking for. You can see what kind of logic is present. Awesome. So I guess on that note, my last question for you here is, um, what is one specific example of a complex workflow that would you know you uh, kind of be hobbling together or hacking an air table that just like works seamlessly and beautifully and easily in grist um good question i mean i i think any time but when you have basically more than a little bit of data on the same screen mm -hmm. that's much easier in grist and that goes for whether you have like a couple of related cards related to a selected record, or if you have charts, um, or actually I, I should I should show more examples here, um, or if you have you know, that's a good example here. It's very similar. Um, or if you just basically want to lay things out in the screen differently because of what your data is like. I love that you can have multiple widgets on one screen and see how they're related to each other. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And let me um, also say, I think uh, yeah. what, when I started, I said there's like two uh, aspects to the evolution of spreadsheets. One is kind of the feature base that we've been talking about. Sure. The other aspect is uh, the philosophical aspect. And in one word, it's, uh, it, you know, for Grist, it's openness. And we really want mm. openness to drive our product decisions. Um, and that's uh, reflected in, in several ways. For one, Chris is open source. That's not, oh. that's not true for Airtable or Google Sheets or anything, but uh, here's our source code. So you can find it here. You can run it on your own computer, on your own server. In fact, uh, that ability is very How important. How'd you bury for... that lead, Dimitri? I, I, well, I, I wasn't going to. That's why I'm talking about it now. <laughs> good, good. Um, I just wanted to mention that for a lot of bigger companies that being able to run on-premise is very important because of how sensitive data is or compliance reasons. Um, and uh, it's already possible and we're gonna have a whole self-managed offering to make it much easier. Uh, and then this openness really drives a lot of other product decisions. So like the formulas I mentioned, the Python formulas. Well, the reason for Python and not some proprietary languages because there is a whole ecosystem around Python. It's the most commonly learned language or taught, taught language. It's the best for beginners. There's all kinds of free tools and tutorials and resources and people who, who work in it. That's um, the fact that you can, um, the date, uh, data lock-in, we, we, we completely do not want Gris to be a walled garden. We want it to be open and for people who use Gris for users to benefit from all these ecosystems around data tools and communities around them. Um, and so, of course, you can export your data as Excel or CSV, but if you download it, you get, get a file, a Grist file, but that's actually in SQLite format, which is an open format. Uh, all your relationships are preserved there. It's a full database uh, format that there's all, lots of other tools that work with it. Um, and Grist is, uh, uh, in, you know, for more technical users, you can use the API to do integrations. You can build custom widgets. Here's an example of an invoice custom widget or a map. Can you widget. sync it to like an actual SQL database and use a layer over that to actually make it uh, like a CRUD app for that database? You mean with Gris being a layer, but the different database yes. being underneath? Not currently. It, it the database is part. Got it. Gris. You guys got to talk to my buddies at Sequin about that uh, and get integrated with them. 
that's all they do. It's really cool. Um, totally separate note. Okay. This is amazing. Uh, I just learned so much. Uh, and I'm glad to see, uh, yeah, I'm glad to see how far y'all come along. Oh, wow. Even with maps, look at that. Um, That's my custom widget. Yeah. Love it. So Dimitri, how can people get in touch or learn more about Grist? Our website is getgrist.com. If you click get started, you can play around, open any template without even signing up. But I do encourage you to sign up, import your own data and, and try it. Um, to learn, you click on the help center link. Uh, I can show you where it takes yeah, you to great. support getgrist.com. There is a few little videos, like these are literally like one or two minutes each to learn the very basic concept. So it's easier for you to get started. Uh, but there is a YouTube channel with a lot more. Uh, the documentation is extensive. There's lots of, uh, there are some tutorials here, a lot more examples of what you can do. Uh, and there's a community forum. So you can, you know, if you have a question, head over to our community and ask. Awesome. Love it. Well, Dimitri, it's been a pleasure. So cool to, to, um, to, like I said, to see how far along the products come and, uh, yeah, y'all, if, uh, you know, you don't want product lock-in and you want some more complex views of your data, check out, uh, check out Grist. Woo. Okay. <laughs> so much, thank, thank you, Philip. Cheers. Cheers.